This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, today is Tuesday which, if you've been watching for the previous few weeks, you will know that not only do we do a top five list on a Tuesday, but the past few weeks we've been looking at um, different aspects of 70s rock. Um, specifically 70s rock, because, as I've said in a few of these videos, I honestly think that the 70s was uh, probably the most fertile and diverse era of rock music for you know various reasons, and we can debate those till the cows come home. But I just maybe maybe it's just the nostalgia thing for me. But I honestly think that is the case. Um, you know the best uh, the best rock music tended to happen in the 70s uh, because there weren't any rules back then, and um, you know and it was you know you had folk rock, you had punk rock, you had classic rock, you had metal, you had blues rock, you had progressive rock, etc. etc. It is hard to think of an era that was as fertile as that for different genres of rock, and perhaps it's something to do with the fact that. Um, Rock music, in fact, all music in those days, uh, used to come on a big 12 inch vinyl format that uh, they needed something to package it in that would kind of catch the eye. And this is where the whole um, thing of album covers really blossomed, I think, in, in the 70s. Uh, prior to that, with a few exceptions, but prior to that, you know, just kind of. Uh, take a photograph of the band, stick that on the on the front cover, and that's the album cover. Um, but in the seventies, it became more of a kind of thing where, you know, I mean, I know people who've got you know album covers, you know, kind of framed and on the wall because they're just such great pieces of art. And in a couple of cases, I've said to people, "Yeah, well, do you like that album? Don't know. Never listened to it. I just like the picture." So you know, it's it's something that that it is an art form in itself. The uh, the, the the album cover in the seventies, uh, especially in the rock genre, was when it really really kind of hit its stride. I think so. Today, that's what I'm talking about. My five favorite rock album covers from the seventies, starting with "Dark Side of the Moon." By Pink Floyd. Yes, I mean, it's iconic, isn't it? Uh, just a simple image, um, you know, a prism, uh, a stylized prism with white light going in one side and, and the rainbow coming out the other. Just basically, I mean, the sort of thing that um, anybody could have produced, but only one person did, and that was uh, Mr. Storm Thorgerson of uh, the Hypnosis Design Studio. Apparently, he... Um, you know, he had like a bunch of different designs uh, that were, you know, kind of candidates that uh, he was going to show the band, uh, you know, for, for the album. And, uh, you know, each and every member of the band walked in and went straight to this particular and he said, that one, it's got to be that one. And so it was. And he, I do remember an interview with him where he said he was a little bit, um, you know, perhaps um, not underwhelmed but a little bit thinking well have you seen all these others how much work i put into those and like you know in the, in the pick what was effectively the simplest one but dear me what a choice it's as i said iconic and um you know got to be one of the most recognizable album covers of all time i think and um you know a great way to uh, present what is i think one of the greatest albums of all time so that's why this one's on the list next boston by Boston. Yes, now I didn't discover this album in the 70s. It was the early 80s when I was at college living in the halls of residence and, you know, kind of having, uh, being exposed, shall we say, to other people's musical taste. That's when I first heard uh, the Boston uh, debut album and was just immediately won over by it. And I just love this album cover. It's just so... It's just so 70s, isn't it? But in, in it's about everything that's good about sort of uh, 70s... Um, you know, kind of aesthetics, really. You've got the uh, the kind of guitar there, which, I don't know, to me, it kind of looks like an ovation, ball back, um, you know, a stylized one, uh, but, you know, kind of turned upside down and suddenly it's a space rocket with blue flames shooting out of it and, um, oh, great stuff. You know, it just kind of, uh, 
it, it for me it summarized the sort of optimism of the era you know where everything was futuristic and, and fantastic um it wasn't in the 70s certainly in the uk it wasn't um the, the artwork was uh, done by let me have a look yes someone called paula Scher, who was the uh, art director at cbs records and um you know she obviously came up with uh, this design for this this new band um which was really only kind of two guys wasn't it tom schultz and um what was he called uh, brad delp you know but uh, this was uh, you know the design that they came up with and again it's just iconic you know it's got the band logo in there um you know and the, the whole kind of spaceship come guitar theme i just think works really really well and again the guy who i was at college with who was kind of playing this album constantly had this artwork as a big poster above his bunk so that was um you know always a nice thing to brighten up the uh, the rather drab surroundings of the of the halls of Red- residence so there you go uh, boston's uh, first album that is a fantastic cover and it had to be on the list next out of the blue by the electric light orchestra Again, the spaceship theme continues. Now, I actually did uh, have this album when I was a kid. Um, you know, the um, Out of the Blue by ELO. What a fantastic album for a start off. I mean, just so many great songs off there. Of course, Mr. Blue Sky is a great uh, song. But, um, you know, another one on there that I don't think gets as much attention as it should, really, I think is uh, Wild West Hero. I think that's a great song, which I believe is off this album. Fantastic album. Again, just that sort of big spaceship, you know, kind of thing going on with uh, something that looks very much like Concord docking there um, into the side of it. You know, and it just looked futuristic. And I think, you know, you, you've got the, the band pretty much adopted this kind of spaceship motif as their logo from this point on. It's just a fantastic looking thing. And, um, you know, it's maybe because it brings back happy memories of of that um those long hot uh summers that never ended when i was a kid and you know and fantastic christmases and what have you but i just um I, i love this artwork and again it would look good framed and on any wall i think so that's why that one made the list next bat out of hell by meatloaf it had to be there didn't it uh bat out of hell um i'm not the world's biggest meatloaf fan i gotta be honest with you um I bought this album uh, in about 79, I think it was, so a couple of years after it came out, um, mainly because of the album cover. Uh, I think I'd heard two out of three ain't bad, you know, the kind of the obligatory sappy ballad on the album, um, which I thought was it's okay, but it's, you know, it's nothing fantastic. The title track of this blew me away. I will... Um, I will, you know, kind of fully admit that, but everything else just seemed a little bit, you know, kind of B-side material. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, Paradise by the Dashboard Light is probably a, an exception, but, you know, um, two out of three ain't bad, heaven can wait, all revved up and no place to go. You know, this, you know, I, I, w- without the title track, I don't really think this album um is anything special but what a special title track it has to be said and what an incredible cover uh designed by uh richard corbin and jim steinman i think steinman apparently came up with the uh the concept of you know the kind of the motorcyclist uh, kind of riding out of the grave and the bat in the background and the uh the artwork was actually done by richard corbin uh, who sadly uh, passed away not so long ago but uh, what a legacy fantastic album for the most part well fan- fantastic title track but an absolutely epic album cover had to be on the list next led zeppelin four by led zeppelin yeah had to include this one didn't i um out of all the album covers i've discussed uh in this video this is the only one that i would probably call album art because you know it's the others have artwork but this is art i suppose there's a subtle difference there because even a thick-headed northern numpty like me can tell there's an, there's an artistic point being made here um you know possibly about the juxtaposition of old and new when you first see the front cover of this album you see a painting hanging on a wall okay you think fair enough and then you open it up and you see the kind of uh the, the full um 
the full picture as it were and uh, you see it's a partially demolished wall and you know in the background there's an evolving more modern uh, well modern for you know the early 70s cityscape with a tower block and, and so on um you know so it's about possibly as i say the juxtaposition of old and new and it's that it's that surprise factor when you open it up and you think oh i wasn't expecting that um for such an iconic album cover or album art there's very little information that i was able to find about who who was involved in the design of this uh, i did a little bit of digging and unlike you know the dark side of the moon storm thorgerson and uh, the hypnosis studio and uh, I forgot to mention, actually, the um, Out of the Blue album cover designed by John Kosh. And um, I might get this incredibly wrong, but I think it's Sushi Nagauka. Um, they were the design team behind the the, uh, the ELO album. Couldn't find any information at all about uh, who was responsible for the design of this. Uh, all I could find was that the painting you see hanging on the wall there was apparently purchased from a junk shop or second-hand shop, antique shop, whatever, by Robert Plant. So, you know, what, was it purchased for the purposes of making this uh, this photo shoot? I don't know. Um, but possibly it was it was the band's idea. I don't. I don't know. If you have any information, leave it down below. But it is just a strikingly powerful image, I think. And if you're talking about, you know, iconic seventies album artwork and album covers then how could you not include uh, the cover of led zeppelin 4 so there you go those are my five favorite um album covers of the night rock album covers of the 1970s uh, let me know what your thoughts are on these if you have any other information on my choices if you disagree with any of the choices, if you have any choices of your own, then just uh, get, you know, kind of uh, put it all in the comments section below, and we can uh, we can educate each other, so to speak. Uh, but that is pretty much the video for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it and found it relatively entertaining. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. Why not drop me a like as well while you're at it? Don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. UK time, where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars. What a great way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now